Hey YouTube, this is John Hammond, still talking about the Introduction to Linux course that I taught and the Training Wheels Shell, or the software that I wrote to provide an interactive textbook to pretty much learn Bash and the Linux command line. So this portion of the video series that I want to talk about is the lesson book package that essentially reads from your file system or the uh, files internal and resources for Training Wheels to load JSON configuration files that act as the script or the text in the textbook. So it actually reads them all from a path, like from a directory, literally just a folder um, called lessons, and then it tries to glob or find all the files that have the name ending in a JSON file, or as long as they are a, a JSON extension, it will load them and it will process them. So this code does that, and okay, I talk about it a little bit in the PDF again if you want to read more about it. It also showcases the typeout effect and how that works. It is just essentially writing each character out one at a time, determining whether or not it's in punctuation, so to kind of make it more realistic in, in speaking-wise, and sleeping for a little bit to determine how long you just want to have a delay between each character. So it is essentially like typing out onto the screen, and it just looks a little nicer and, I guess, user-friendly, whatever. It's for learning, a, little, a nice little visual effect as someone is typing on the keyboard. So it determines whether or not uh, it is in a current directory. That's kind of a handy-dandy thing, just to make sure uh, the user is kind of on the right track. Uh, I added this functionality kind of late into the development of the tool, and I feel bad because some of the previous lessons don't have this functionality. But it tries to make sure if you're trying to run specific commands, like if it's important that you're in a certain directory with a certain set of files, you'll make sure that the user is actually in that directory. Uh, that's a good note to uh, keep in mind if you do end up writing some of these lessons. Because writing a lesson is what's important in extending the software, and that you don't actually need to learn or know a whole lot of Python if you want to use the software. You can certainly if you want to develop uh, or fix bugs or really change up the program, but if you wanted to add more content, all you have to know is really like how to write English <laughs> and talk, etc, etc. So uh, it loads a lesson, sorry, I'll, I'll I'll kind of, I guess, go off in that tangent as we get closer to loading the files uh, and the files themselves. But the load lesson just determines, okay, can I read a file out of this uh, and determine each portion of it by uh, the lesson number and name. Moving to the next lesson is in its own uh, function here because it will say, okay, you're all you're all good with this lesson, you're all done, and it will try and move on. If you can, if it can get detect that you there aren't any more lessons or you're finished, then sweet you can go off on your own and the, the program will, will exit. You're done, essentially, with the lessons that Training Wheels has for you. If not, it will reset the pointer, like, keep track of what lesson that you're actually on, and move in the array or in the uh, kind of setup of lessons that it's been able to load for you. Again, you can read more about the text if you particularly want to, but I just have variables that are keeping track of all of, all of those things. Um, there are functions to select a lesson, and a lesson is kind of the greater, uh, I don't want to say architecture, that's not the right word, but the, the, the bigger entity than a concept. And the concept is each question or input line by line as you're going through, as you're working through the uh, interactive textbook or as you're working through training wheels, but the lesson is a broader set of questions or set of activity things to do. So selecting a lesson will display out just like the menu that we saw in the demonstration when I ran this code in uh, I think two videos back now, and determining whether or not you actually want to load a lesson, whether or not you have one loaded before. It's just kind of a, a menu to do so and displaying tab characters, the number, etc. It just displays them out, a little bit of content displayed on screen with colors. I'm using these uh, shorthand capital letter functions because they're defined in that colors package that tries to create quick and easy uh, return the string wrapped in the color detailer from Colorama. Selecting a concept, again, very, very similar thing uh, from a lesson, but again, starting kind of the line by line, each question that you go through, each thing that you actually do and interact with while you're moving through the training wheel shell. And you can probably see a little bit more of this if you actually play with the program or do things with it, but again, this is the back end, how it works. It displays whatever lessons it can, it lets you choose whichever one you are on or not on, and then jump into it. 
that lesson pointer and all those things that are kept inside this object are necessary for the lesson book go function that will walk through and 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 do things <laughs> like actually proceed through the lesson and text uh, as you're working through training wheels. This is a big function, so I didn't include it all in the actual kind of Bible PDF documentation thing right here. So I explain what it does and that I check out the current position in the running lesson and constantly save and update. So you have the the data or the, the progress that you've already done will be kept track in that file that you can load from the save and load engine. It'll retrieve all the properties from the current concept or what you're reading display it out, wait for user input through with that process function in the shell object, it'll parse the input and then check if the user is in the current directory, as you saw that functionality earlier, process it, and then increment the pointer to move through the lesson and actually progress through that text. So, the cool thing that I wanted to talk about in this, this tangent that I wanted to go on now is that you don't need to know Python if you want to extend this or add content or add material to teach a class. All you need to particularly know is JSON, which again isn't that hard, it's just kind of semantics and, and markup and stuff. Um, and that's just English if you want to write lessons for it. But I do an interesting thing here in the code and that I don't write them all in straight JSON, I write things in HJSON. And HJSON is human readable JSON in that it adds a little bit of niceties, like trailing commas, not necessary, not needed in data fields, or different kinds of commenting, that's whatever, sure. And strings without quotes, particularly if you wanted to, but the big thing is support for multi-line strings. Because if we're writing essentially a textbook, we're going to go on more than one line if we're trying to explain a concept or something. So that became necessary, and I wrote all the lesson files in HJSON, but Python doesn't know how to import them or process them. I don't think there's a quick and easy library or module to do that, and I didn't really want to write one in this case. <laughs> um, so if we use JSON, if we use HJSON, we have to convert it all back into JSON. That's fine at least for development purposes, it's easier for us to build and rapidly deploy and develop things in HJSON and then just convert it back. So I wrote a thing to process a lot of them and a lot of the files uh, in a fellow script here that I'll display, but it's using the command line HJSON utility that uh, you can install if you need it. And again, I wrote a little install script to do that, and that it needs Node.js, uh, the Node package manager, and it's, this is just a simple bash script with colors and all to quickly run through that stuff. So, stupid and cheesy, but handy. You can install those if you want to in just those two lines, uh, again, but for good packaging, I use that color and output and, and all those fancy things. So the compile lesson script is the code that I had written to just, okay, convert HJSON into regular JSON, and it does this in the directory that you give it, or in, in the directory that you are currently in. You don't actually supply it. So that's bad, that's not good code, whatever, my fault. Um, I expected dirty usage because you're kind of in the weeds as a developer right now, so you'd have to run it from within the lessons ob uh, lessons directory, lessons folder. You can see because it's doing that with the asterisk.json. Remove all new lines, character turns, blah, blah, blah. So this is necessary to do this if you want those lessons included in training wheels, and it'll automatically load them because of the way that the lesson book just checks the files in the, in the directory. So, handy, but just remember to run the compile lesson script. The hjson lesson file syntax, you can see a lot of them as examples uh, if you wanted to just kind of rework them or do something on your own, but I offer some sample syntax for one of the lessons in here and that I explain, okay, there's a name for the lesson, the concepts are an array of objects, and each one has a tag, which is essentially the listing that you'll see if you were to select a concept, the message that's displayed and typed out on the screen as you're working with that, and then the command that you are waiting for or that they expect you to run or do and, and move on with, um, that's what you as the, in, the user would run or type as you're progressing through the training wheel shell. And just a, a message or some notification to explain or kind of offer a hint as to what to do 
if they don't know the command or if something is wrong or they, they aren't entering what they, you would expect them to enter. So again, I talk about this in the code, um, but I do showcase that I, I try and drive the point home in this documentation that these are the lessons that I wrote as I taught this class. Welcome to Training Wheels. Here's how to use it. Uh, the man pages to discuss them, what your home directory is, absolute and relative paths, how they are, what or what they are, and how you work with them, paths and files, special places and catting files, working with files, filters and pipes, users, root, and pseudo, uh, adding and removing users, etc. And that is the amount of concepts, the amount of material that I covered in the class uh, with some with some activities and with some other engaging stuff that I'll showcase in later videos. But keep in mind, that is not the end-all, be-all of the Linux class or of my software. I know that this is not the most elegant program with not the most elegant lessons and certainly not elegant documentation or even just me trying to talk about it, but I give this to you or I give it to whoever uses it with the disclaimer that your mileage may vary. You can tweak it and customize it to your liking. That is the point of open source software, um, but the gradation that I wrote it to begin with, and the original content is mine, uh, there it is. <laughs> Push that to the world. Give it to the internet with the flag state claim that this is mine that I wrote it to begin with. So, um, this was a joke that kind of came up from this, and that Training Wheel Shell didn't have a, a nice, cool, quick name, just like Bash has, and that Bash comes from the born-again shell. So, Thinking about this, I discovered I wanted the name based off of Training Wheel Shell to be Trash. <laughs> and uh, hopefully that's a good one. So, cool. In the next couple of videos, I'll talk about the Linux scavenger hunt, and that actually gets to some interactive material that I would like to cover and showcase. Uh, so I'll actually move around this game and do it, and uh, kind of... This is actually the, the start of my... Er, this is the original... CTF platform and framework that I wrote, so hopefully that'll be interesting to watch and a couple cool, fun, interesting challenges to poke around a Linux file system or learn how to do things. Uh, this was an activity that I gave the students and an exercise to do alongside Training Wheels, because Training Wheels is just essentially the skeleton or the jumping off point for a lot of activities and stuff within the class, but I wanted to spice it up with, with other kinds of, of content and material. So... Quick shout out to the people that support me on Patreon. Thank you guys so much. I cannot say it enough. $1 a month or more on Patreon will give you a special shout out just like this at the end of every video. $5 or more on Patreon will give you early access to everything that I release on YouTube before it goes live. Because I normally like to record in bulk and let YouTube release them gradually on like a day-to-day -day basis or whatever. But if you want the content right away, right when it's hot, when it's ready, that's the best way to do it. Just $5 on Patreon. Thanks. If you did like this video, please do like, comment, and subscribe. If you want to get in the scene, come hang out with cool people like me and other CTF players, programmers, and hackers. Please do join our Discord server. Link is in the description. It's an awesome community, and we would love to have you. I would personally welcome you as soon as you enter. Uh, they, they all laugh at me because I do that, but it's nice. I would love to see you guys on Patreon, and I would love to see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.